everybody, Caleb here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today I've got this old guitar here. This is a Carson J. Robinson. Um, this came from Montgomery Ward back in the late 30s or 40s. Um, it is beat up. Um, there's plenty of cracks in the top. There's a hole in the bottom. There's plenty of cracks in the back. You can probably see how scratched up it is. There's a big crack here. Um, you know, we got parts of tuners missing. You can see the pit guard is chipped. Um, the bridge is broken. I'm gonna go ahead and set it down and maybe I can get show you a little bit closer all the all the details on this one. Well, you can kind of see how broken this bridge is now. I'll zoom it in a little bit. There's a big old crack. We're probably going to have to replace the bridge. There's one crack, two crack, three cracks, four cracks, five, just right, right in this area. It is supremely cracked. It's also very bulged over. The top has an extreme bulge to it. Yeah. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it's very bulged up in the center. And that goes all the way to, you know, in this area. It's really bulged over. The, I think the biggest bright side here is it doesn't look like anybody else has tried fixing these. Which is a good thing, because that means that there's not any, you know, glue already in the cracks. Whew. That's the top. You know, I flip it over. On the back, there's a crack here, here. Um, you know, it's so scratched up, it's almost hard to spot them. There's one here, the big one down here, where the back is, you know, starting to move. The back is starting to separate from the sides there as well. It looks like white paint there, or some kind of paint. And then, like I was showing, there's that big hole in the bottom there, right next to the end pin. Yeah, end pin's missing. There was only three uh, bridge pins, and they're all basically trash. I'm really not sure what the inside is like, though. That's more my real question is, is what bracing might be loose? I really don't know. It's hard to tell because if I tap on this, I can kind of hear some stuff rattle, but I almost wonder if it's the cracks. So I guess I'll stick my hand in there and see what I can find. Well, the bridge plate is broken. About the same place the bridge is. Bracing doesn't seem loose. It actually seems fairly large. There's a brace that runs right about here. Yeah, yeah. And there's two that run right about here. They don't seem loose. I can't get my hand into any further. I don't know if there's something else down here because this doesn't feel like it's much further than here. That's for the ones on the back. Feel pretty tight. There's not a whole lot of bracing in this thing, but the bracing that's in there doesn't feel loose except for the bridge plate. And it's, it's a fair size, it's just broken. About in the same crack that the bridge is. It's loose on the back. I don't think there's any big problems with the neck, other than it's scratched up and dinged up and well worn. We got some pieces missing of those tuners. And very rusty and gunked up. Um, so it looks like we're taking this guitar just about as far as we can go with it. Pit guard starting to come off. We're going to try to keep this pit guard original. Uh, you might have noticed it's cracked off. 
right here. I think I'm going to just try to kind of round it over and we'll color that in black, just like we're going to do with the most of it. This is one of those things where I'm not 100% sure where to start on this because there's just so much. Um, I'm going to try to get it cleaned up a little bit because it's dusty and dirty. So um, I guess I'll bring you back once I decide what it is I'm going to start on. Until then I've got some thinking to do. Well, I have arbitrarily decided to remove the bridge first. Um, you can see I've got the bridge removal tool on here. And it's heating up. It's at almost 150 degrees now. Um, I think I've decided the saddle was glued in because it broke pretty good trying to take it out of there. So, I mean, that's not a huge deal because this bridge needs replaced. It is smashed up. So once this gets up to heat, I'm going to wait for it to get up to about 380 degrees. I'm going to start working my way underneath of it, see if I can't get it off. I can't imagine it's going to take that much to get it off. So we're up to temperature here, and I'm trying to get the, my tool warm. I'll try to get this where I can show you, and I won't be in the way as much. That back edge that's broken is just going to come off, I can tell. The thing I've noticed here is, is for as much as this is broken, the glue isn't all that loose anywhere. I think I've just about got it off of there. It's been fighting me all the way. it is. Didn't it pull too much off of there? In terms of fixing a hole like this, um, Caleb was just asking what the best way to do it. And the way I typically do something like this is I, you, you have to go to the widest spot and you, you basically just square it off as much as you can. Just make it a square you can try to patch an, a crazy shape like that, but it's just much harder. And you're not really losing much more wood. So you, you square it off as perfectly as you can square it off. Then what you do, the secret is that you bevel all of the squares toward the inside like this. So the inside is smaller than the outside. Then you cut yourself a patch with, this, with matching bevels and, and you push it in there. And then you've got more surface area. For one thing, that gives you more surface area because when you bevel it, this each side gets longer. And then that little patch has the same matching bevel on it. And when you put it in there, um, that'll leave the, the patch a little bit proud of the surface here. And you want to make sure you do that. You want to make sure the patch is a little taller than the side is. And then you can sand it or, or uh, plane it off or, or a combination thereof until you get it perfectly smooth. And it really will be very strong and really will be, uh, match pretty well. So that's what I'm suggesting for Caleb to do in this spot here and I think he can handle that. Well I guess to get it square, which is where I'm going to start, I'm going to use uh, a little bit of a combination of my little files. I'll bring you a little closer. My little files and my X-Acto knife. I can cut a little bit. And that way I can keep it fairly precise. I think this is this is working really well. I can also use my little files and make sure the ends are flat. And when I go to bevel them, I'll use the little file and just bevel that on there. So I'm going to go ahead and work on getting this squared up. Still got a little bit to go. Well you can see here I've got this squared up and a bevel put on all the sides of it. Um, on this side I'm actually hitting the block so you know I can kind of use that block to make sure I'm square. 
and it's looking pretty good. I've also got a piece of mahogany made that's fitting in there pretty good. I've already kind of got it labeled. I decided it fit better this way than this way. So I don't know if you can see it, but there's pencil on there that says top and back. So I was thinking about how I was going to clamp this in because I'm trying to put a, a flat, you know, piece of wood over a curve. And even then, how was I going to clamp it? So I went ahead and got the uh, the rubber here and I'm going to end up wrapping it both this way and then I'll come around and wrap it this way as well as long as I don't drop it in the guitar. So I think we're going to be able to do this here. I don't know if you heard, but Jerry suggested while I was clamping this up to put some clamps on here and put some wedges under there to push those ends down. And that's what I ended up doing, and it worked really well. I could see both of those ends are pressed down, so it followed that curve real well. And I, it definitely needed that, so I didn't end up wrapping it this way, because it kind of got in the way of doing this, and now that I've done this, I'm thinking that's going to be real good, so I'm going to give this some time to dry and set up. Well, I let this set up overnight, and I've already started cleaning up, cleaning it up, as you can tell. I'm using the finger plane here to knock off the bulk of this, and that's working pretty well. Gives me good control, and I can get pretty close to the side without worrying about it. I'm going to get this a little bit further along. Um, once I get it real close to the side, I can start using some sandpaper and get it going. I've still got a little ways to go though, and you can kind of see how I'm doing it, so I won't bother filming much more. Well, I've got the bottom plug looking really good, so I decided to move on to getting this crack on the back closed up. You've probably seen this setup before. Jerry made these to fit the lower bout of a guitar so you can kind of clamp it in. Um, so I just used it. They're sitting on here and these aren't very tight. It's just tight enough to hold them up because it's kind of a pain to get them up towards the top. I've also got a couple of these clamps to uh, clamp the top down because it's, you know, a little free. So I'll get that clamped down as well after I bring it in. Um, I think we're ready to get this going. Well, since I got the back of this kind of glued back up, I've decided to start working on the top. And uh, I kind of talked to Jerry about what the best way to go about doing it was. And the first thing I did is I took the uh, X-Acto knife and kind of cleaned out these cracks. Uh, I've already gone ahead and done that through mo oh, all of these cracks. Um, and then you can see I've got these clamps sitting on here waiting. Um, what we decided to do was just give this a shot, try to glue this up, and then after I get glue on here, I'm actually going to put a board on top to flatten it as well as pull it in together. So I'm just going to go for it.
right, it's the next morning now. You can see I added an extra piece in here. I noticed yesterday when I was pushing down on it with my fingers, it was uh, squeezing out a little bit more glue, so I went ahead and added an extra bar in here. Um, I'm gonna start taking these off of here. There's a little bit of glue for me to clean up, but uh, there's a couple of little dots where there's not any glue, where it's not glued together. But I'll, I'll see what Jerry thinks before I do anything else here, and then uh, we'll go from there, I guess. So after having Jerry take a look at this top, uh, we've decided we're just going to go to the CA glue and the tape. So you can see I've got the tape here on each side of this crack. There's just barely a gap between them. Alright, so I'm just going to run a small amount of super glue down the gap. He's crying for all our pain and our fears. Well, there you can see how I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that with this crack and this crack. and. Make sure there's no more I need to hit. So I'll do that off camera since it's gonna take a little while. Well, I've been working on super gluing some of these cracks closed. Um, but before I go on to move, working on the back a lot, I figured I was gonna cleat some of these top ones. Uh, you can see here I've made some spruce cleats. They're made out of a nice piece of spruce. I'm gonna put them in here with the grain. Uh, perpendicular to the grain of the top so it'll be running this way because the grain of the top is running this way there's a couple of spots behind the bridge plate book before the next cleat where it or before the next brace where it could definitely use some cleats there's a big open spot on these cracks here so I'm gonna try to get those in I'll end up using magnets to stick those in and I think the best way for me to do that is I'll tape a magnet to the top so it can't move. And then put the magnet on the back of my cleat when it's got glue and it'll go right where I need it to. So I had Jerry take a look at this bridge plate one more time. I think you remember me saying that it was broken. Um, we've pretty much decided it's trash and it's got to come out. It does span the whole um, lower bout. It goes from side to side. So it's going to be kind of difficult to remove. I've got the tool that we use here and it's sitting on the bridge heater just over here. and It's warming up. But uh, I'm getting everything warm, and eventually I'll put that bridge heater on the space where the bridge was and get it warm, hopefully help us remove that bridge plate. So I'll wait until this gets warmed up, and I'll bring you back and show you a little bit. Really, there's not a whole lot to show you because it's all inside the guitar, but I'll try to show you kind of what I'm doing here. So we've had a change of plans with this uh, bridge plate that's in here. Um, what I was doing was I was taking my heater here, and I was heating up the top. And then I would take the tool and stick it inside and try to pry that bridge plate off. But except for where it was broken, which is about here, back this way, and it only goes to about, about here, um, nothing came off. It wouldn't come off. It was really stuck. And you got to remember, it spans the whole thing. And it we definitely would have broken the top a whole lot more. And, several places trying to get it off. So we've decided that we're not going to try to get the whole bridge plate out. What we ended up doing, or you know, I had Jerry come take a look at this and he suggested taking a razor blade, wherever I have one. So I took a razor blade, took it inside, and then I trimmed up a straight line across the back of these holes where it was broken off. Kind of, you know, straightened out the edges. Now we're just going to fill in that spot and a little bit further behind it to strengthen it up because that, that 
plate that's in there is not loose. So we're just going to take out the piece we need to and put in a piece that will uh, span that whole area and it should fit it fairly tight. Now something else I've already done was I put a piece of paper in there because I've already cleaned it up pretty much. Well, before that I went ahead and uh, double stick taped some 220 to this block and I stuck that in there and I sanded that up so I got this nice and flat this uh, straight line that's right behind the holes on this side and then it kind of comes up. So then after that I took a piece of paper, a real thin piece of paper, stuck it in there and kind of made an impression of the shape that it is and you can kind of see that there. So the holes sit right about here and then it comes up so I can make a piece of wood that kind of fits this impression and that'll be this side. I'm um, talking to Jerry about what we're going to use in here. Um, the plate that's in there is spruce and that's probably why the top has bulged so bad because it's a soft wood. So we're going to put a hard wood in there but considering the caliber of fix we're doing and we're not replacing the whole thing we decided it wasn't really worth it to put a piece of Paducah in there but we are going to put a piece of cherry in there and cherry is a nice wood you know, and it sounds nice, but it's not quite as expensive as Paduke. So I've got a big piece of cherry here. I think I'm going to cut this up and use it. Just cut it. Get it fitting in that shape. It's still really thick as well, but it's still kind of rough sewn on this side. So I've got a little bit to do to this to get this fitting, but I think I'm going to get this piece of cherry ready. And I'll end up cutting this. Uh this kind of shape on there. I'll probably come out past the holes so it'll actually span a little bit further and then it'll come out a little bit. I don't know if it want to make it square. We're going to round this back a little bit. I think it makes sense to round it a little bit. And we'll try to get this clamped flat and it should just fit right up in there and we get it glued in. I hope that works out well but I gotta work on this piece of cherry now I think. It's just one of those things where you know you're trying to do what you can do without making it worse and it's getting that bridge plate off of there would have been nice to replace the whole thing but it just doesn't make sense trying to do it this way in this tight guitar you know it's it's thin for as big as it is so even when I had that tool in there I'm hitting my knuckles on the bracing it just wasn't going to work so we'll do it this way and it should work well yeah, the fix should work. I'll work on getting this made, I guess. Alright, so I've been working for a while and I've got this plate made. Um, so the first thing you're probably going to notice is it's not symmetrical. Um, you can see like this end is longer than this one here. And that's, you might be able to see I've actually got a line on there and two dots. Um, just the way that it ended up cut out was not symmetrical. So, you know, I just did my best to make it match, make it fit well. Um, I've also kind of rounded this end off and I've actually thinned it down on this back edge a little bit because we're getting further away from the strings but I am going to leave it this large to try to help keep the top flat because if you remember this top was really really bad so I'm going to try to do everything I can to get it in there um, I've got this on here and I had some wax paper on there or parchment paper on there to stop any glue squeeze out from sticking this down but this is going to help me clamp against this but I'm also going to clamp this down first to try to get that top flat. I've also got a call on the inside of the guitar already. Um, I've got some clamps kind of ready. I'm going to go ahead and open those up a little bit more. I think I'm just about ready to put this on here. First step will be clamp this to the top. I'm keeping these clamps on the on the kind of sides of the back so that it's clamping against the whole side not just the uh, not just the back so I think we're ready for glue our paintbrush there We'll 
we'll give it a couple hours to set up. Maybe until tomorrow, considering what time it is. It's afternoon today. I may not get back to this. But uh, we'll give this some time to set up. Hopefully that will help keep that top a little flatter and we'll be much better off for it. Well, we're going to refinish at least the back of this uh, Carson J. Robinson guitar. You can see I've already worked on the sides and I've started working on the back. And I'm going to show you a little bit, but I'm not going to show you a whole lot because it's taken me a lot of time. Um, I've got a scraper and I'm scraping the old finish off. It was beat up, scratched up, dinged up, and broke. <laughs> if there's anything that could be wrong with it, it was wrong with it. It had old paint on it some, from somewhere. So, I'm working on scraping off the old finish. Once I get most of it scraped off, I'll come in with some, I think this is 180 sandpaper and sand the whole thing and it'll end up looking a little bit more like those sides there. It's not looking too bad. Um, I thought I'd bring you back show you a little bit here. I'm sanding away at this. You can definitely see where I've sanded, you know, kind of in here. I haven't really got up there yet and I haven't gotten the edge yet. vacuum it off. We'll see what it looks like. There's where we're at so far. It's looking pretty good. But we still got a ways to go. So I'm going to get back to it. I'm going to try to finish up down here. There's dark spots. That's where I'm aiming for really is those dark spots. So I'll try to finish that up and then I'll get up to there and we'll have this back done. Well I've been working on this for a while. You can see all the back stripped and I've gone ahead and done the back of the neck and the back of the headstock as well on the side of the headstock. Everywhere that was dark brown, you know, I was thinking I need it all to match. The best way to get it all to match is to just take it all off and make it all the same. Um, I've still got a little bit of sanding to do on the back of that headstock. You can probably see it's not quite as clean as the back is. But it's definitely coming. Um, I am going to have to dye this dark brown again. There's just too many spots of dark spots and dark lines and broken bits. Especially with that fill that we did on the bottom. That patch doesn't exactly match, so I'll have to dye it dark brown again. And we're not too far off of that, really. Um, I, I was talking to Jerry a couple days ago, because it's Monday, so it was Friday, about what we wanted to do to this headstock. Um, I'm going to try to clean it up best I can without knocking that name off. I think that's our best plan of action there. Um, I haven't talked to Jerry at all about what we're going to do with the burst. That could be kind of painful, so I decided not to touch it yet. Um, but as for the headstock, I think some really light sanding in places around the name. You know, not on the name, but around the name to help clean it up maybe a little bit of scraping where I can and then I'll come back and touch up all the black later and then we'll clear coat this when we clear coat everything else so that'll protect it for years to come but I'm gonna get back to sanding this just a little bit more in the headstock and the neck cleaning it up alright so I've been working on this headstock trying to get it cleaned up uh, you can see here it's looking pretty good what I ended up doing was a really light Sand, wet sanding with some 600 and that cleaned up the name really good and then I went through and touched up the black with one of these uh, black paint markers that somebody sent us and I don't remember who sent them but somebody did <laughs> uh, thank you whoever it was because I don't remember but anyways it's looking really good I think that headstock um, and remember we'll clear coat this when we do the back of the headstock and the neck and the back and the sides and you know when we refinish it we'll re-clear coat it. I'm not 100% ready to commit to doing anything to this part of the finish. Um, these bursts can be very difficult. 
I'll have to talk to Jerry about what he thinks we ought to do with this. Because it can be a pain dealing with these and getting them to match. And I don't know if I should... I don't know. I'll have to talk to Jerry and see what he thinks about Well, Jerry's been busy with several projects on the farm, so he hasn't had time to come in and take a look at this Carson J. Robinson. But, you know, I'm ready to get moving with it. So I'm going to go ahead and dye the back sides of the neck, the back of the neck, that, you know, that kind of thing. I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, Feebing's Leather Dye Dark Brown. That's the same stuff we use all the time for the dark brown. And you can see I got gloves on, so I'm hopefully not going to dye my hands too badly. What I'll do is I'm just going to put some on the cloth and then wipe it on. Here we go. And that didn't get me very far, but that's okay, because that's better than getting too much on there. And you notice I've been uh, moving the bottle over, off the table, over the floor, when I turn it upside down. That's uh, one of those things you pick up after you don't do it, and it causes a problem. So when I turn the bottle upside down, it's not over the table. So I'm not worried about spilling brown dye everywhere. Again. Alright, so I'm just about done with this back, I think. Um, one more thing I'm going to do to this, I'm going to get some of the, the uh, denatured alcohol. Put that on a rag, and then wipe that, wipe this down, because you can probably see it's a little splotchy. There's a couple spots where it's darker, but that denatured alcohol will help blend it all together. I'll be a solid color. And I might have to go through and touch it up some more. But I think this is just about the end of what I'm going to show you. I got a lot of this to do, really. Get it all the same dark brown. That was just the back, and I've spent oh, a little while on this. So I'm going to keep working. I'll bring you back once I'm a little further along. That's looking pretty good. I'm ready to get these gloves off, so I'm gonna stop for a little bit, make sure it's all real dry, give it a good look over. I'll probably have to go touch up a few spots, but uh, I don't really want to touch it now. Try not to turn my hands brown, but um, yeah, it shouldn't be. Should be pretty good. Shouldn't be too much longer, and this will be done with doing this. And I can maybe figure out what I'm going to do there. Well, Jerry's back in the shop today, and we've talked about the top. And, you know, looking at the way that the customer's talking, pretty much the only option I've got for this top is to, you know, start over. We're going to do the whole thing. Um, I've already got some pictures on my phone of the uh, top. So I can, you know, reference it for color and burst. So I'm going to go ahead and get started scraping this. I'm just going to use the scraper and take it off. Um, I'll get started and I'll bring you back once I get into a groove. Just a few drops to rid all my pain. Well, I've pretty much got it all scraped off, so I've gone to sanding. And it's taken me a while. I'll bring it back when I uh, decide to do whatever I do next. Well, I've been mixing colors here. Um, I've been using the yellow and the red. Those are sitting down here. I'm trying to get the orange. 
and I was looking at my picture and I thought, well, there's a lot of red and the light brown and it might help me get a little closer, so I used some of the light brown as well. And this is where I'm at so far. Um, I think this is probably going to be good enough. I'll try to show you the picture as well. Um, now, what I'm thinking is, this is going to look good. You know, this is a good, good orange. But if there's a big difference, you're going to see it more than anybody else is going to see it because you've seen the old color and the new color within a minute of each other. Whereas everybody else, it's going to be, you know, a fair amount of time between seeing the old color and the new color. So you can see I've got me a big cup made of it. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing the top. And I'm going to do it like Jerry does the mandolins where he starts with the yellow and does the whole top in the yellow, but I'm going to start with the orange and do the whole top in the orange. And then I'll go back with the black. But I think I'm going to do a little bit of masking on the guitar first. You notice I took the guitar away while I was working with the dies, because I do not want any accidents. But uh, I think this is going to be close enough. As we get started here, I'd like to remind everybody that, you know, like what Jerry says, we don't really consider ourselves to be a finished shop. You know, we don't have the high quality booths and finishing equipment and color matching that some places would have, but I think we're going to make this look good for the 80 year old instrument that it is. Here we go. It's orange, no doubt about that. I'm gonna go get the denatured alcohol here in a second. And give this whole thing a rub down. Fairly abrasive rub down. I'm going to give this whole thing a couple of good rub downs with the uh, denatured alcohol. It'll help blend everything together. And the more I keep working at it, the better it's going to look. So I'll bring you back when I feel like I'm done working at it. So looking at these on the internet, uh, most of them looked like they were at one point three-tone bursts. So it was an orange and then kind of a red and a black. But, you know, if this one... I guess maybe the red had all faded away on this, but it really doesn't look like it was a three-tone burst ever. Um, that being said, it is lighter in the middle. It is darker on the edges with the orange. And I'm going to leave it like that. But I am going to start to work on the black. Well, um, I thought I'd give you a look here where we're at. I'm not, you know, ecstatic about how it turned out, but it's all right. And I'm going to keep working on it for a little while. You know, I think it looks nice, but I wish it looked better. Like Jerry always says, I think I might let it sit for a while and, you know, I'll think about how I can do it a little better. I put the pick guard on there so you can get an idea how it's going to look. The pick guard. I still need to do a little bit of cleanup work on that pick card. But, uh, something like that. Well, you can see I got the hook on here and I've been working on cleaning up the binding. I thought I'd show you a little bit of that. What I've got is my X-Acto knife. And I'm holding it here and I'm just barely sticking a little bit of the blade out. So 
so that you know it's just as deep as I want it, and then I'm just scraping the binding. It's a little bit of a time-consuming procedure, so I'm just going to show this a little bit, show you how I'm doing it. So that's going to take quite a bit more. Once I get uh, just about done with this, I'll bring you back and kind of show you what it looks like before we start spraying it, I guess. Well, I've worked on getting this all blended with the... Uh, denatured alcohol and I'm pretty happy with it. I'm thinking I'm getting ready to spray it. Well, I'm just noticing a spot right there in the binding I didn't quite get. But besides that I'm gonna get ready to spray it and I'm gonna spray it with this true oil. We had good uh, good luck with this on the, the Lindbergh guitar that I did so I'm gonna use it here too. I think it's gonna work real well. You can see I've got the whole fretboard taped off because I don't want to get any finish on there. I've got my hook installed. So I'm going to go ahead and get this ready to get sprayed and I'll get a real light coat on there. you got to do real light coats with this true oil otherwise it runs. Alright well it's Monday morning and I've sprayed this all last week. Uh, this is the Carson J. Robinson. Um, looking at it, it looks darker on camera than it looks in person. But, you know, regardless I need to do some sanding on it. Um, I've got a strip of 400, I'm going to cut into some pieces. I don't think I filled all the grain, all the cracks yet, so we're not done putting finish on this, but it is a good time to sand it back and get it relatively level. Well, I just cleaned this off a little bit so you could kind of see where I was at. Um, you know, you can see it's getting level in some spots, but there's still little dots where the finish is lower. And there's only, I think there's a spot where I hit the black, or I might have hit what I airbrushed on, but, you know, I noticed a little bit of black on my sanding. So I'm going to kind of try to not do that so I don't have to re-dye anything. Well, I'm noticing little dots. I don't know. Might be alright. But I got a lot of this to do. So I didn't think I'd show a whole lot more. Because I got the whole top to do, the back and the sides to do, the neck and the headstock, both sides. I got a lot of sanding to do. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off. Um, I'll probably bring you back when I get close to finished with this round of sanding. So I'm giving this a good wipe down now. Uh, trying to get off any of that extra dust that was on there. So I can get ready to spray it. And I didn't get it, you know, totally level, but I didn't really expect me to. Um, there are a couple spots where I can tell it's getting really thin or I might have just barely started to sand through. So I'm gonna stop and go ahead and spray this. I'll go ahead and clean up the back here in a second, but I just thought you might want to see kind of what it looks like. And, you know, I'll spray this a few more times, and then we'll come back and we'll sand it all again. Hopefully this time we'll get it a little closer to level before we get sanding through. Alright, it's actually been so long since I've recorded anything on this Carson J. Robinson, I don't remember the last time that I did record it. Um, I've got the finish far enough along that I'm ready to put the bridge on it. I'm done putting finish on it, basically. It's not exactly all the way polished up yet, but that's okay. I've got more work to do. So I've got a bridge made. I've got a temporary saddle. I've actually got the tuners on. You can kind of see it. I've got the nut on. I'm ready to figure out where this bridge goes. We're going to use the temporary tailpiece to attach the two outside strings to. 
and then we'll know where the saddle intonates and where the bridge needs to go. So I've got a set of strings. I'll go ahead and get the two outside ones out and on, and then we can start figuring out where this goes. I've got these strings up to pitch, both all the way up to E, and they're intonating well with the saddle in its current location. I'm just trying to make sure that the bridge is square, that I've got it even on the body, or that it should be even on the body, because sometimes these necks are a little crooked, and if you get it even on the body, it's going to make the strings wrong. So there's a lot of things to look at to make sure we're happy with where this is. And I think it's looking pretty good. As I look at it right now, it looks a little bit crooked uh, this way. I can barely see the center seam on the body, so I'll try to check that with... Maybe this protractor. That's looking pretty good. Um, the one thing, I can see where the pit guard goes, and you can see it's sitting right over here, but I can see where the pit guard goes, so I don't really want the bridge to be in that area. I'm getting pretty close in this corner. <clears throat> if I wasn't that close, I maybe would bring the bridge a little bit further forward, but since I'm kind of running into the pit guard. I think I'm going to leave the bridge where it is. And I'm actually pretty happy with where the bridge is right now. So I may just mark it. I'm going to measure again. It's just less than three and a quarter. It's just about the same on that side. So I know, at least on the body, we're centered side to side. What I'll do is, I'll check the distance from the string to the end of the, the end of the, the ramp. I'd say that's pretty close. So, I'm going to mark the bridge. I'm going to check the intonation one more time real quick. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, so. I'm going to mark the bridge now. I've got the sharp X-Acto knife, the pointed one. The knife should all be sharp, but this has got the sharp point. And I'm going to very lightly work a mark in the finish around the bridge. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the sharp, the little fine tip mechanical pencil. And I'm going to mark the saddle, the front of the saddle. That's the more important side. That's where the string leaves the saddle, so that's the intonation point. So I'm going to go get the pencil. So I've got the real fine pencil, and I'm just marking the front of the saddle. That should be good. I'm just going to double check and make sure I got this all marked. Alright, that should be good. So now I can take this bridge out of here, actually. I'll take the saddle out first. I can see the line on there. That's good. I said I was going to take the saddle out first, but I sure didn't. Okay. So there's a pencil line on there. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's on there, and that'll be where I cut the saddle slot. Set that to the side. And yeah, I've got a nice score line in the finish for me to take the finish off. So I'll take the finish off inside this area. And you can probably see this new bridge is bigger than the old bridge. But I actually thought the old bridge was a little too small. Probably didn't give enough support for this top, which is why it was bulged and broken so bad. So anyway. The new bridge is a little bit bigger. I'll cover a little bit bigger area. We should be good to go with this, but I gotta get these strings off here first. So that'll be my next step. I'll bring you back once I uh, get this whole string rig off of here and we can move on. 
I'm working on peeling the finish off and I'm just using the round ended X-Acto knife and I'm just scraping the finish So I've just about got all the finish off of here and I think I'm going to go ahead and plug these holes. I've got a 732nd drill bit and I'm just cleaning them out and I'm going to go ahead and get the laser cutter going and have the laser cutter just cut me some 732nd plugs and then while those are drying I can work on the saddle slot on the bridge so well you can see I got six plugs cut that took me less than five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue in these holes and shove them in there. Now I didn't drill all the way through the the uh, bridge plate and we put that in there so or at least something in the back there so I'm not too worried about this. I'm not going to worry about clamping it up. I'm just trying to fill that with wood so it's a little stronger. And they all sit flush, so that should be better. I'll give that some time to dry and we'll get set up to work on the saddle slot next. Well, I thought I'd show a little bit of setting this up. Um, I've got the rig kind of sitting here and the bridge is here. It's marked up. I've got my line. I've got where I'm stopping. And I've got a piece of tape on the back. I'm going to put it in like this. That gets where I'm cutting, kind of centered in the space. Um, it'll be on this side of the line. So that works pretty well. I'm going to put some CA glue on the tape. That's the reason for the tape. And then I can put that down flat on the tape that's on the board. And now that's not going to move. You can see it's all solid one unit. These are screwed into the board so they won't move. Now what I'll do is I'll get set up with the router base and then I'll, I'll bring you back once I got the router set up to go ahead and cut this. So I think I am all set up to do this. I've got this all set up. I've even got the depth set on the new router base that we were sent. The new Dremel router base that a very nice viewer sent to us. I believe I am all set up to do this and it shouldn't take more than just a minute to do it. I'm actually using the light that's plugged in that's built into the base so hopefully I can see where I want to stop a little better. Um, I'm going to check. I think we're good to go. So I'll Go ahead and turn the Dremel on and start cutting this. That turned out perfect. Um, try to get it where you can see it. That slot turned out great. It was actually really easy. It looks like it's the same depth all the way across. Well, it got a little bit of junk in it, but perfect. So I can get this torn apart and we can get that set, uh, that bridge off of there. And move on. So I think we're just about ready to put this bridge on here. I went ahead and had the laser cut out a little piece of paper with the right string spacing for where I wanted the outside strings to be. And that got nice perfect holes. So. There's a little idea for you if you're having trouble getting good spacing. And I could just drill straight through those holes and that's what I did and here we are. So, uh, the back needs cleaned up now just a little bit but as soon as I clean up the back part of this bridge where the holes I just drilled are, we're ready to glue this on I think. Um, I might do just a touch more cleaning on there and I'll get this cleaned up and I'll bring you back when I get ready to glue it on. All right, I believe we are ready to glue this on. Um, I've got everything clean. Everything's ready to go. I've got clamps sitting over here. There's a call already taped on the inside just with some painter's tape to use against the clamps. 
I believe we're totally ready to get glue on here except for opening the glue bottle. There we go. So I'm going to put some glue on the guitar first. I'm just going to use a paintbrush. It's looking really good. Um, I'm gonna leave it just like it is until tomorrow at least and it should be good to go from there so we'll look at it again tomorrow. So I've done a little bit of work on this. I've got these holes drilled out all the way through and I'm getting ready to ream them and what I'll do is I'll put my hand on the inside and get the reamer just to the point which I can feel it on the inside. That's where I'll stop is right there. I'll go through and do that on all of them now. You can see I've got this coming along pretty good. I've got the pit guard on here. One thing we were asked to do is put this picture of the customers. I can't remember if it's his father or grandfather, but this is a picture of him playing this guitar. So we were asked to put this on the inside of the sound hole. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I went ahead and wiped down the inside with some denatured alcohol just to make sure that it's going to stick well. I'm going to go ahead and put this flat board on there and put something heavy on there for just a minute or two just to make sure it's good and stuck. <laughs> 